Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So I've got a product review for you guys and it's another N95 duckbill style respirator by Prestige Ameritech. Yeah, so I guess we're kind of on a roll, right, with the duckbill style N95 respirators. I've had a lot of requests for them, so I just wanted to do, this is, I think, the last one. I've done the Gerson already. I'm going to link that video right here. And then I recently did the ACI, and I'm going to link that video here. I'm also going to put them down below in the description box. So this is the last of the three duckbills so far, anyway, that I've tried, and it is by Prestige Ameritech. And by the way, I just want to thank the people at Armbrust. They've been so kind to me because most of you guys know I don't do affiliate links on this channel. I don't like make any money off these things. I don't want to prey on people's fears and I don't want the bias that commissions might create. But, you know, that said earlier on in the pandemic, I was like doing all of this out of my own pocket. And to some extent, I still am. I definitely have approached some retailers like Armbrust saying, hey, I'm kind of interested in trying this for review. And they're, you know, all I really ask for is a sample. They're just kind enough that they send me the box. So there's just a couple things I noticed just right off the bat looking at the box. And one of them is this statement that there is no rubber latex in the product. Now, I think pretty much all these products are latex free these days, but I have had people ask me about that. And I think it's just a nice thing that they put that in a very obvious location right on their box. The other thing is that it says size regular, which told me there are different sizes and that's very unusual for a duckbell respirator, so I'm going to get to that in just a moment. And then finally, they have this perforated piece right here. I purposely left it intact so I could show it to you, because normally we open, here we go, normally we open these boxes at the top, and then the product is in there, and like a lot of products, these are not individually wrapped, so you maybe don't want the whole box open and exposed that way, but you can punch in where it's perforated right here. And this is like to maybe put it on a shelf or something, and then you can just pull out one. You can just slide it out. I'm not gonna do it right now. It just kind of keeps everything a lot more closed. You're not like dipping your hands down into the box. They also do give some detailed instruction with pictures on how to put the product on. I'm gonna go through that anyway in just a moment. So the Prestige Ameritic Duckbill Style Respirator N95 sells a box of 50 for $99.95. Of these duckbill respirators, that's the most expensive one I've found. It's definitely not the most expensive N95 that I've reviewed. I reviewed the 3M N95, and a lot of people really like the 3M. It's not a duckbill, but it stays off the mouth, and it's kind of hard and rigid. It's not the dome. Uh, it's like in three panels. I'm going to link the video here for that product. That's actually, the I think, the most expensive N95 that I have reviewed. It comes in at around $4 an item. Still, at $100 for 50 of these, or about $2 an item, it is more expensive than the other duck bills that I have reviewed in almost double, actually, or more than double in some case. So the Gerson comes out to be a little more than a dollar a piece, and the ACI came out to be just about a dollar with our discount. If I remember correctly, it might have been even less. So with the Sandy 20, which is Armbrust code that we're allowed to use as many times as we want, that's not a one-time code, Armbrust code would bring these to $80 for the box of 50. So that is that is a big help. I think Armbrust also has one of those things where you can uh, sign up and agree to get text messages. And then for one time, you can get 30% off. So that's a better deal one time only. And then after that, use Sandy 20. Again, that's not an affiliate link. I don't make any commission off of that. I just try to leverage any influence I have to help my viewers. Now, if you were interested in a large quantity, you would definitely save by doing that as well because they have a box of 300 of these and that's for $533. So that's pretty significant savings per item. It still doesn't bring it down to some of the other duck bills that I've reviewed. Now, as for the size, the size is really interesting because this comes in a regular and a small. Now, unfortunately, I think one of the drawbacks of some of these duck bills is maybe they're not the best option for people who have very large head circumference. And as I've talked about before on this channel, there are some styles that are just in general better for certain issues that people are trying to address. For example, one of the issues I'm always trying to address is this concavity under my eyes where I get, it's very hard to conform and I get a lot of leak right in that spot. So that's something I'm always really attuned to. But there's another issue where some people need more generous sizing. And I can remember the early days, the early generation Synovia mask, that was a constant problem for people who needed more generous sizing. I have found in general that that's going to be a challenge with the duck bill as well. The people who need more generous sizing, that some people tell me that the duck bill just doesn't work for them for that reason. 
So this comes in a regular, so I was like thinking it was going to come in a large also, but it's a regular or a small. So I'm wearing the regular. Now the regular, it says, uh, is from 22 to 24 inches in head circumference. And they say you're supposed to measure just above your ears, the head circumference. I'm exactly 23. And I'm going to show you in just a moment how this fits me. Uh, the small is for anybody under 22 inches, so I think that's for a child because I have a pretty like narrow face and head. And anything over 24 inches in head circumference, this product is not recommended. The thing that I think is really great is that it tells you that here, so you can decide if you're going to try this product. All you have to do is measure and decide whether this is something that you want to try before you're out all that money. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to just pull one out the way I said. I really like that feature. And plus, this allows you to just leave it on the shelf in a closet or something and just pull them out. I, I really like that. I think they should all have that. So this is a white one, and it's got, there you can see the size. It says regular because they come in regular and small, and it's got the NIOSH approval. So this is one that has the nose band is embedded. It's I can feel that it's pretty wide, but I can't, like, show you anything because it's it's inside of this, you know, polypropylene on both sides. Unlike the other two duckbills that I have already reviewed, this one comes where the two straps are already separate. So both the Gerson and the ACI I reviewed, it looks like it's got one thick strap and then it comes apart. The one thick strap comes apart because it's perforated. This is already apart. Now I have noticed that sometimes I just happen to get a better fit in the ones I've previously mentioned where I don't separate it into two straps and I use them both up high. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to use it like that first. I'm going to put it on both ways actually for you so you can see. So as usual with these N95 duckbills, what I try to do is I just, I make a little bit of roundedness around the nose. You know, I'm going to customize that later, but I try to put them on in such a way that my hands are only dealing with the head strap. I don't have to touch anything else because you kind of get your fingers caught under there and it's, it's a pretty tight seal, the duck bill. So what I do is I've got my hands on the head strap and then I'm going to catch, I hope you can see this on camera, I'm just going to catch the lower edge of the mask under my chin and pull on the head straps. I've got them both up high right now. Of course, I don't have my hair clip in. I normally would if I'm going out wearing an N95. The first thing I do is I make sure that I've got this flat, which I do. Sometimes the bottom border, at least on me, tends to roll in a little bit at the sides. So I always make sure that I've got the border here on, you know, the lower part because that, that really informs the seal. Okay. Then what I do is I start, I push down on the nose and I start by forming it just around my nose and pushing inward toward the nose on either side. This is because I'm trying to address this deep set eye problem where I get some leak in the concavity. So now if I just were to pull the rest of the nose band to smooth it over my cheekbone, I'll probably be pulling here too and I'll be taking away some of that custom fit I've just conformed. So I hold it here and then with the other finger, I round this around the cheekbone. It is a nice long nose piece, so it does give me the opportunity to really contour it, not only under the eyes, but when I push it under the eyes, I still have enough space here to get some conformity around the cheekbone, and I really like that. Now, one thing about this duck bill, as duck bills go, they tend to be off my mouth. Um, this one is a little smaller. It's just a little smaller fit. I'm wondering if I can probably move a little if I can move this off a little bit out from under my chin, make sure I've got this right now. Yeah, I've said before that I don't really mind the pulling in and sucking out because that tells me I'm actually breathing through the medium. But I will say that this one is just a little smaller fit. So depending on what I'm doing, I don't only have to take a deep breath in in order to have it feel it at my lip. Sometimes I feel it touch my lip depending on how I'm moving my mouth or something. It does not bother me at all, but for people who are particularly bothered by that, I wanted to mention it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put my safety goggles on. Now, again, I think you should be really careful once you get a respirator on and you feel like you've got a good fit. Now, I don't feel any obvious leak anywhere. Yeah, I think it's really important that you now don't disrupt the straps by sort of putting the glasses on. We tend to like put our glasses on, like skimming our face like this, but then, then the arm of this will be disrupting and getting in underneath the strap. You don't want that. So I actually pull these out a little bit and make sure they're over the straps. Now, I had a chance to go around and try this out. 
Now, I'm finding that I do, finding I have a little bit of leak over here, which I did not have when I tried these. And I wore this, I had an opportunity to really wear these a fair amount because I, I like to have some experience with them before I do the review. So let me see if that wasn't just a matter of getting the fit a little bit higher or lower. Sometimes you have to play with it a little bit. The issue, yeah, that's better. The important thing is that you're just not having to play with it a lot once you get it so that it's not leaking. So once you get a good fit with it, you shouldn't have to be like constantly messing with it all day. Yeah, and I can move my head all around and this thing is not budging. And normally I would have my hair like up in a clip or something. So like this would be, this strap would be up on top of the clip. And that sort of keeps the strap exactly where I want it. You gotta be careful, I guess, if it has a tendency to slide with hair there, but. Yeah, so it looks really good. So that was my experience that, you know, with any of these, sometimes you put it on the first time and you get a little bit of fog and it just means you have to either raise it up or bring it down a little or, you know, just adjust something until you've got it. Um, I did notice that both while I was using it out and about and now that once I got it, it tended to stay and it was a very nice fit. Um, again, I do notice, though, that this one is it's just kind of um, I don't want to say a tighter fit. But it's, it just sort of, it hugs a little bit more, you know, and, and like right now I can feel, depending, well, maybe I can pull that out. Depending on what I'm saying or how I'm moving my mouth, sometimes my top lip is encountering probably the inner layer of this, not, you know, this is several layers. Um, it doesn't bother me, but for people who are particularly bothered by that, this is not going to be your jam. Now, for people who have this particular problem that I have with these deep set concave eyes where you tend to leak, uh, this is going to be your jam because this is one that tends to uh, keep its fit better than other ones I have found. And I don't mean just from being on one time. I mean, one thing I'm always trying to keep track of is how well these fit after multiple taking it off and putting it back on. Because while this is supposed to be a uh, one-time use, it's a disposable item, let's face it, we all live in the real world and some of us are putting this on because we have to run in somewhere for three minutes and then we have to leave that place and then we have to go somewhere else for five minutes and you know, you wanna take it off and put it back on in between and even people in hospitals do that. Sometimes you have to take your, your respirator off for a moment. So, you know, when you do that, you're always stressing the straps, you're, you know, you've already kind of changed the fit a little bit and you've conformed it in one way. So. I, I don't know about you guys, but I find that I have to be mindful of that. Some of these are better than others at conforming a second, third, or fourth time. I will say that I find that this one is particularly good for that. Now, it's also one of the most expensive of these duckbill respirators, like I've already said. So, you know, to me, this would have its place, which, by the way, that's the case with everything, right? Nobody write to me one more time and ask me, what's the best mask? Because... You know, first of all, we all come in different shapes and sizes and we have different issues to address. And even if that weren't the case, we use masks for different things, right? It's just like saying, what's the best pair of shoes? I'm not going to use the same pair of shoes to go hiking as I am to go, you know, walk on the beach. So, you know, I think we need different things for different purposes. And as long as I have them, so yeah, this one will have sort of its special designation place. You know, it being that it's a little bit more expensive, it's not going to be my grab and go all the time. It's not going to be something that if I'm only going to need to wear it once and then toss it out, I, you know, then I might not use this. But this is particularly good, like I said, for keeping its fit and for keeping its fit after multiple on and off. All right, I'm going to take this off. So now that said, I don't use it indefinitely. I don't even tend to use these the next day. Um, you know, one thing about the polypropylene in here is it, it has a charge. That's part of how it works. And also the moisture from your exhalant uh, will break down that charge and it will also break down the filtration ability to some extent. So it's not something that like just because you could get it to fit and it feels like it's sealed, uh, you just don't want to wear these indefinitely. It still is a disposable item. So bear that in mind. Yeah, so now we've got three duckbill respirators to choose from. And I want to thank the people at Armbrist again for their generous discount code. I'm going to put the links to all three of those videos down below in the description box. Let me know if this was helpful, guys. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.